Hi, this is Tony Mormino, and in this quick video, I'm going to compare a digital scroll compressor with a variable speed scroll compressor. And these two types of modulating scroll compressors are used in our industry quite frequently. They, they are a little bit different, uh, but accomplish the same thing. Before we go into the modulating types, let's quickly look at how a scroll compressor works in general. So this is a image of a typical probably five ton ish scroll compressor. So what you see here is your power input. There's a motor embedded in this can that turns the scrolls, which we'll look at in a second in this little video. So what happens is the suction gas comes in here, your suction line, and it is uh, brought into the scrolls, compressed, heated, and discharged out at the top in your hot gas discharge. Line. And what this looks like, there's a nice little animation here that shows it. If you were to take this seam here and cut it or unweld it somehow and take the top can off and look down, this is what you would see in the compressor. So as you can see, there's an orbiting scroll in here. What happens is the gas gets pulled in, sucked into your suction line, and it goes through these ever decreasing volumes here. And as it uh, decreases in volume, the gas is compressed and, and heated. And that's basically how the scroll compressor works. It comes in here, spins the gas around into these little pockets, and, um, and compresses it, and then shoots it out the top. It comes out this discharge pipe right here. Okay, so that's your typical scroll compressor. Now that up until recently, um, maybe 10 years ago, or when I first started in the industry 20 years ago, this is all we had. We, had, we didn't have any type of modulating scroll compressor. So uh, the, the failing of this is it's either on or off. So you get what you get. So um, we're very fortunate today in that we have two very uh, reliable, very efficient um, types of modulating compressor technologies. One of them is called digital scroll compressor, also called a variable capacity compressor modulating scroll compressor or a VCC compressor, which is a variable capacity compressor. So what happens is from the outside, it looks fairly similar. Most of the sizes do anyway. But what happens is the top of the scroll, as you can see here, disengages. So the motor speed is constant. It never changes. What happens when you want to reduce the capacities, you disengage the top scroll. And the way this works is in an SCR control basis over 20 seconds. So it looks at 20 second increments. If you need 50% capacity, it's compressing for 50 for, for 10 seconds, and it's uncompressed for the other 10 seconds. So it's basically how variable capacity or digital scroll compressor works. The advantages of this compressor is it's extremely precise control. It's highly efficient compared to an on-off with hot gas bypass. Since your velocity of the refrigerant does not change because the speed is not changing when it's compressed, you, it's very effective with getting the oil back to your compressor, which is totally dependent on the velocity of the system. It also gives you ample reheat at low load conditions, which is great with dehumidification products, which we do a lot of. I would say one of the um, Disadvantages is the acoustic. Some some of them in the larger sizes have an unpleasant acoustic uh, characteristic to them, um, which is a fancy way of saying they could be a little loud when they load and unload. It's pretty rare uh, to have that problem, but it, it is worth mentioning here. And a lot of people will hear them load and unload and think that the compressor is short cycling when it's actually not. But that, if there's any disadvantage to this compressor, I would say um, um, that would be it. So this is a, uh, so the next technology is the variable speed compressor. And it looks from the outside very similar. But what happens here in this case is we're actually changing the speed of the motor with an inverter or a VFD, some other product like that. This is also referred to as a modulating scroll compressor or inverter compressor, inverter scroll compressor. A lot of different terms to describe the same thing. But again, it's different from the variable capacity in that it actually changes the speed of the motor. Okay. The advantages are you get very precise control. 
it is efficient. I would say it's slightly more efficient than the digital compressor. I'm not sure it's much more, but it is slightly more efficient. Very quiet, especially at low load conditions. It's extremely quiet compressor. Um, some of the disadvantages when you're ever you're changing the velocity of the refrigerant, when you're slowing this compressor down, you're changing the velocity of the refrigerant in the system. You have to have uh, some consideration for oil return. So that's one of the drawbacks of this type of compressor technology. But most manufacturers have figured that out and there's ways to make sure that the oil gets back. Um, and then you probably have a consideration here for a minimum allowable speed so that you get enough reheat for your dehumidification application. So you can't, um, if you're reheating, you can only bring it down, let's say to 20, 30% um, of your capacity. So, you know, in the, when comparing these two technologies, there's engineering trade-offs in every technology. I kind of lean towards the variable capacity compressor or the digital scroll just because I'm more familiar with it. I've been using it for a long time. I have no problem with this compressor either. We sell equipment that has this compressor. It works great and it functions fine. So, okay, these slides that uh, you just looked at were taken from a presentation I put together some time ago called Why DX Systems Fail. Well, basically, I've been in the industry for about 20 years now and and what I've done is kind of summarize the, you know, the most common mistakes I see when people are specifying complex DX equipment, uh, similar to like an Aon product. And it's a really good presentation. If you want to see it, you can actually schedule lunch and learn with me right now. If you're watching this on YouTube and on your desktop, there's a little blue link below. Just click on it. It'll take you to a live calendar, which is synced up with my Outlook. And you'll see in blue the available dates. Pick a date, pick a time. Put in your email, you'll get a confirmation. We'll coordinate with you the headcount. We'll bring lunch by. Of course, there's no charge at all. And uh, we really enjoy doing this. So if this is something you think you'd be interested in, please go ahead and schedule it. If you are watching this on your iPhone or your mobile phone, you have to click this little down arrow here to expose the link. And it's the same kind of situation. It takes you to a calendar. You can pick the date, pick the time, and you're all set. So again, we thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please let us know. We hope to see you soon. You, your project. In the world of commercial HVAC, we know that whether you design, construct, own, or maintain buildings, you need a partner committed to getting your project done right, on time and on budget. Welcome to your network of partners. Connecting more than 20 offices across the country with over 500 associates working together, Delivering the right HVAC solution for your project. One national network with one local purpose, your success. Because working together, we're stronger. Insight Partner.